How to successfully breed and raise your own queens? Well, first of all, you don't want to do any grafting. You want to have as much diversity in your honeybees as possible. I'm the largest and only all-year beekeeper in this area. During the summer, the commercial beekeepers bring their bees into my area. And they are therefore larger than me. And I will breed my queens with their drones. But before they get here in mid-June, during the month of May, I'm breeding with my own drones. And virgin queens will mate with drones in their area if that's all there is. So you don't graft your queens. And I also do not use a mating nuke. It's kind of redundant and ridiculous. I use a deep. And in May, when it's cold, I start out with five frames, like a nucleus. And then at the end of May, when they start filling their nectar, especially if they've failed the first time to create a virgin queen or get one mated, and I give them another frame of brood, I will take one of these out, and there'll be a seven frame. And then, as soon as I confirm that they have a laying queen, I take that out, and I stick in full ten. Now, this is what makes my method better I don't take the frames out this right here colony is day eight I go around and I make sure I know which day the virgin queen emerged from the queen cell and I make a note of that the date and the number that that hive is and then around day seven or eight I go through and I look to see if she's still there if she was lost during a mating flight chances are she's not going to be there but if she was successfully mated, she will be in the hive on the frames. I saw her there a while ago. But anyway, this queen just started laying. It's day eight. And I normally, it's the same time I put in a, a screen bottom board, but I run out of screen bottom boards. So I'm going to put in three more frames, close this up. And I've also run out of medium supers. So I would put a medium super on there, and I sometimes you end up putting a, a medium frame down in a mating nuke. See, that is a medium frame. When I get a laying queen, I move them up to a medium, and I stick in there the proper number of deep frames to get them started. But I don't have any medium supers. So, so anyway, what makes my method better is not grafting and not using a uh, nuke box. And keeping track, that's why I number my hives, keeping track of the status of a queen. And if you can catch a lost virgin queen in time, you can put in another new virgin queen. And this is another thing. I don't smoke a colony right away. I have a smoker nearby. If I need to use smoke, I will. But you don't want to smoke a colony. Because if they've lost their virgin queen, sometimes they won't tell you until you've opened it. Like if I was opening this and they started roaring, I would know, yes, they lost their virgin queen. It's time to put another one in. And when they're roaring, they will accept another virgin queen. But first, I'll leave her in the cage for a few hours, half a day, and then I check before I let her out. If you were to come over here and start smoking this colony right away, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to roar. So don't smoke your colony unless you absolutely have to. So I've done over 100 new colonies. And I value a colony at $250 each, so I've made $25,000 worth of honeybees this summer. And it's July 24th, and here was May. And half of the nukes you make are going to lose a virgin queen because it never successfully was created. And for some reason, I don't know if it's attributed to small colonies in cold temperatures but I also had the same issue after it warmed up. So I don't know if it's the toxic chemicals in our environment causing some of these honeybees to not do what they should. But anyway, a line through the number means they didn't create a virgin queen. When I circle the number, they created a virgin queen. And I don't write down any more on that. I write down when they get a virgin queen, I write down in this notebook here. And then I go through at day 7 and 8 again and I check to see if she's there. And if she's not there, you check in the morning. Don't check in the afternoon. That's when they do their mating flights. So you check in the morning, 
And if the only time you have is to check in the afternoon, go out the following day in the morning and check to see if there's no virgin queen. If there's no virgin queen, you've checked twice, maybe three times, go ahead, cross it off red. And if they have no brood, give them another frame of brood. But here's the other thing. I stopped doing, I stopped pulling brood from my colonies mid-July. I stopped doing new mating nukes. I will cut out queen cells and put in a colony that loses their virgin queen, but I will not create any more. The reason why? Sometime in August, you don't know the exact date, robbing's going to be an issue. During the month of August, I can't do this. I can't leave this, this hive open like this. If I did, they would get robbers. And once they get a few robbers, they're going to constantly have robbers, even after you close it up. So this best up here in Michigan, maybe different down south, but up here in Michigan, I don't create any more mating nukes by putting brood in after mid-July. So by end of July, early August, I won't have any more mating flights. And then by mid-August, I will know which ones are laying and which ones aren't. And as soon as, as, soon as you have the ability to get rid of a mating nuke, you know that colony is not going to make it. Combine them with a the colony next to it because as soon as you do that, the sooner they can get larger and you won't have to feed them syrup. Uh, the commodities have gone up. Sugar, Domino cane sugar, ton pound bag is over $6 a bag right now. So I really don't want to feed a lot of syrup. I, I normally had to spend over $1,000 every fall feeding them, but I'd rather not. So, again, your, own, your homebred queens are better than anything you can buy. Uh, the packages contain old queens because of commercial beekeepers. They want to requeen the colonies every every year and they are not going to kill that queen. They're going to stick that queen in a package. This is common sense. Nobody in this country is honest. If you can find a person that sells packages that doesn't take their bees to the almonds in California, go ahead and buy those packages to honeybees. And then also um, buying queens. A queen can lay really well for the first month or two and then she can pit her out afterwards because she wasn't mated very well, and you've just wasted 40 bucks. So when you're breeding your own queens, you're not wasting your money, and I think it's so much better. Okay, thank you.